Well, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the Women in Football webinar with Kelly Klein today. Uh, we're excited that you could join us. Um, this is our final webinar series for the uh, Innovative Coaches. And we're glad that Kelly can share her story today. We're seeing more and more women in football and uh, it's really encouraging. Um, I'm Diane Bloodworth. I'm the CEO and founder of Scout Smart, and we help college coaches find recruits that fit their program uh, using predictive analytics. Uh, and in fact, Kelly might mention a few things on analytics today too, so I'm really excited to hear that. Um, you know, it hasn't been so long ago that we really didn't have very many women who were involved in uh, football. And in fact, I remember going out on a date with a man several years ago, and he asked me, if you could do a do-over, Diane, and have any career you wanted, what would you be? And I said, I would be an NFL coach. And he said, no, 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 no. I mean, really, what would you be that's realistic and it's something that you could actually do? And I thought, wow, what limited thinking that, you know, he, he thought just because I was a woman, that was out of the realm of possibility. So I'm so excited that this generation of women today are uh, making this happen. Um, and really, we're seeing more women in roles in football. And we love the sport. We love the sport of football. So uh, it's, it's really a, an exciting time. I'm going to introduce Kelly and turn it over to her. Um, I'm just going to give you a short bio on her because she's going to tell us her story. And uh, we're going to be able to ask her questions. So be thinking about the questions that you have. We can post those in the Q&A window or the chat window and I'll monitor those and make sure we get the questions answered. Uh, but Kelly is in her ninth season with the Vikings and eighth uh, within scouting. Uh, obviously, if she's made it eight years, she's an important part of operations in the Vikings personnel department. Uh, her responsibilities on the pro scouting side include assisting with weekly scouting advances, as well as compiling special teams advances for the coaching staff, and she has other operational duties. For college scouting, she scouts the Midwest region and coordinates all of the offsite scouts, schedules, and facilitates all pre-draft visits, as well as coordinating all all-star games and the combine. So Kelly, I'm going to uh, stop the share of this particular uh, slide there, but ask you, just give us a little background on your story and how you ended up with the Vikings. I think we're all curious, how did you end up in the NFL? Yeah, um, first of all, hello everyone. I wish I could see you in person or all be together, but this will do. <laughs> uh, thank <laughs> you for joining. Um, yeah, so I um, I grew up in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, um, hour from Green Bay. So I was back then a big Packer fan, loved Brett Favre. So that's when I loved, I fell in love with football was, you know, my early life. Um, and then I went to college at University of Minnesota. So that's when I was trader number one, trading from the Badgers to the Gophers. Um, <laughs> I worked in the athletic communications office there. Um, you know, so mostly working with the media, you know, passing out stats at games, just doing internship duties like that. Um, I studied sports management, also communications. Um, at first I wanted to be like a sideline reporter, but then I know that, you know, I'm not, as you guys will see, I'm not a very great public speaker and <laughs> not very clear all the time. So I'm like, okay, let's try something else. Um, so my, let's see, junior year of college, I had a project for class and I had to interview someone in the sports industry in Minneapolis. So I found um, one of the PR guys at the Vikings through a friend. Um, so I met with him. I interviewed him at the same time. He kind of interviewed me for a game day internship. So I'm like, yeah, I would love that. Um, so it was just on game day going there, like kind of like my college, exactly what I was doing at University of Minnesota, passing out stats, recording post-game interviews, things like that. So I did that for a year and also helped out in the office um, just with some stuff with PR um, and did two training camps with them. And then my senior year, my spring senior year before I was going to graduate, um, the scouting intern had quit two months before the draft or so. So because I just got to know everyone, you know, at training camp and in the office, um, the guys just asked me to help out for two months because this was nine years ago now or whatever this was. <laughs> um, I don't know. So we didn't have all the technology we do now. You know, we had to, you know, call all these agents and players and manually input phone numbers and all the stuff. Now we just get it all automatically, thank God. Um, so I started doing that, uh, did that through the draft, and then they hired me on full time as an intern for a year. Um, and then after that year, they had me on as a scouting assistant, so a legit full-time position. Did that for, I don't know, a year or two. 
and then I became the cop scouting coordinator for the last couple of years. And then um, just last summer, I got my title now of manager of player personnel and college scout. So I just started um, going on the road on my own last fall. So I had three states last year. Now this year I have five. Uh, that's great. So you didn't start out saying, hey, I want to be an NFL scout, but it sounds like you were, you knew you wanted to be in football and you kept an open mind to opportunities that came up along the way. Yeah, I had no idea. I mean, I didn't even know what a scouting department consisted of, you know, like now I think it's more out there. I think with just social media with more webinars, with more podcasts, things like that, yeah. you know more about everything. Um, but back when I was in college, I mean, we didn't even have like Uber. I'm like dating myself. I'm not that old, but <laughs> you know, it was just different back then. Um, and I had no idea what a scouting department was. Um, and nor did I have any idea if women were in it or weren't in it. Like it didn't even cross my mind. I had no clue um, until I really got in it. Um, and even when I started, when they asked me to help, I'm like, you guys, I don't know. I'm in communications. Like that was what I thought I wanted to do. And, uh, you know, work with the media and do things like that. And I got just give it a try. You know, it's only a couple months. You can just help out and then see what it is. And as soon as I was in it, I'm like, oh, this is, this is it. I loved everything about it. I love being a part of the draft process. I mean, it was, I, it just felt right. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, tell us a little bit about what you do on, you know, describe some of your work in more detail, some of the things you're responsible for, your metrics for success is what I always call them. Every job has certain metrics, you know, things that you need to accomplish. Talk to us a little bit about what that looks like. Yeah, so I am, I mean, most of my priorities go to the college side, I should, I should say. We're pretty, I mean, we're not separate, but we kind of are. All of our college scouts, I'm the only one in the office on the college side, really. Um, our director of college scouting lives in Maryland. Um, all our scouts live all over the country just because they they have their areas. Um, so which is cool and it works for, works for everyone. Um, In-house, it's the pro scouts, everything like that. So, and our interns and the other department, the other football ops departments. Um, so when I'm in-house, I, I'll take, you know, probably five to eight special teams advances. Um, so that really, you know, I watch whatever opponent we're going to play um, that week. I submit to the coaches, um, a four game look on the team that we're going to play and basically chart out their special teams, you know, on all four phases, you know, kickoff, kick return, punt, punt return, and then field goal as well. So that's my big priority when I'm in the office um, is working on that. And then also just helping out the pro scouts or, you know, I've done a little bit of salary cap stuff, not, not much at all, but I started to learn some of that too, just because I'm just trying to learn as much as possible. And I've kind of had a weird path that my title never existed in, you know, our organization. Um, so I've kind of created my own way. Uh, and then on the college side, which is where I do most of my work. So like I said, in fall, I go out scouting. Um, you know, it, it's, I don't have too many schools just because in my state, there's not that many. Uh, but that's okay because I have duties in the office. Um, so I do that in the fall. And then December, we have draft meetings. And then January, we have... Um, East West All-Star Game in Florida, Senior Bowl in Alabama. So those are two weeks. Mm -hmm. We come back, we do draft meetings in February. Then we go to the Combine, then we come back and then it's Pro Days in March. So you're on the road at those. And then I do our, I'm kind of our um, leader of our top 30, we call it. So mm -hmm. you're allowed to bring in 30 draft eligible visits before the draft, just to get to know them better. You know, if you have more questions, if you need your own physical, things like that. Um, so I work with agents scheduling out all those and, you know, working with our operations department, our PR department, our medical guys, you know, just making sure it's all organized. And um, we just do it in two dates. We bring everyone in and we have a big dinner and it's a big event and it's, it's really special for these guys to get invited to. Uh, so that's one of my favorite things to do. I love doing our top 30 and you get to know these kids. Like yeah. that's why I love being on the college side. You really get to know these players and it's fun to talk with them at the all-star games at the combine top 30. So yeah. I think that covered most of my duties. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. So, uh, you know, I have to ask an analytics question being I'm in the analytics business. Talk a little bit about the analytics that you look at in the combine and, and in preparing for the draft. Yeah, so here I, I type these up, all the things we do with analytics and pull this Yeah, up. yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so first of all, um, in the office, well, we use pro football focus a lot. I think a lot of people use that now. Uh, colleges, you know, college, they have everything. Um, so we use PFF a lot, and what you can do with that even, you can, uh, you can go into PFF, you can, if you are searching for, you know, a receiver when he lines up in the slot, 
on third down, you, you name it. You can pick and choose everything. It'll give you the place for that whole season. You click it, boom, it goes right to our NFL vision computer or whatever, you know, whatever video system people use. Um, and you can watch all those plays just like that. So that's huge for scouts. Um, sorry, did I freeze there a minute? No, you're good. <laughs> My computer just froze away. Um, so that's really good for us scouts just to be able to focus more on what we're trying to look at, especially for that specific player. Um, so that's kind of the pro side. And also, you know, in practice, we use analytics tracking players and their output. Um, we just, you know, take all that data and our you analytics know, guys do a ton with it. Uh, so when to optimize training. Yep. Yeah. And we use it um, in our advance as well for, you know, preparing for opponents. Scouting you know, like, the opponent. Yeah. Yep tracking tendencies, things like that. Analytics has a big role in that um, for us, and I know a lot of teams. Yeah. Um, and then on the college side, the biggest thing, close on. <laughs> um, so with college free agency, uh, you know, there's so many players. There's an incredible amount of players, just like you got oh, yeah. Well, we've got high school players in our database. We have 100,000, so trust me, I know all about that. Way more than us. So we use it a lot to kind of pick out you know, and, and I don't know the exact formula or how they do it, but our analytics guys are incredibly smart and have this down to a whole formula. Um, but, you know, it's just a way to kind of like bring out the top athletes of, you know, all the undrafted free agents or who we think will be undrafted. And we stack those guys up top for undrafted free agency. You know, we, at that point, you know, we, people kind of call it throwing darts, you know, it's just like, yeah. you're not drafting these guys, but if you're going to bring a guy in one, he needs to be, he has to have a good character, good, be a good kid. You, you need a good kid, especially if as a free agent, you know, he also has to have good medical. You don't want to bring someone in with all these injuries. You know, he's, he's going to be injured. He's not going to make your team in the first place. Um, and then if you just want to bring in the best athlete, they, they tend to have the best chance as a free agent. If you you know, have this key athletic trait or whatever it is, so they have a whole system and for every position different for a key trait that we use. So, but that's huge when it comes to college for agency. And we get all those numbers from, um, well, one PFF, but it comes from their combine numbers, their all-star numbers, um, their pro days. You know, we go to pro days and get their own t our own times. And right, verified, yeah. Yep. Oh, that's great. Hey, we have a question in the chat window and we've got one in the QA. I'll start with the chat window from Bob Johnson. Um, and I'm not sure if this is going to be in your, in your area of expertise or not, but what challenges do you see in women's NCAA sports with the name image likeness, the dollars a QB might get versus a woman uh, equestrian rider? I don't know if you if you followed that whole name image yeah. likeness, but you know, athlete college athletes can now be paid for that. Mm -hmm. But you know, we know who's going to get the big endorsements. It's going to be your top football players and men's basketball players. And just what do you see for women's sports based on this? Right. I know it's gosh, it's incredibly hard. I mean, it's I I would love for obviously we'd all want everyone to get paid equal if possible, but we know life is not like that. You know, it's not. And unfortunately, we've seen the U.S. women's soccer team. They're fighting for it now, and I think they yeah. finally – but things like that. And in U.S. women's hockey, I mean, it's just insane that we still have to fight for this all the time. Um, and they – you know, especially soccer, they're way more popular than the men's soccer team, but yet yeah. they're not. Okay. So I think you kind of – more championships, right? It kind of relates to colleges and that, you know. Um, I get that football brings in way more money, way more – you know, you can sell their jerseys. You know, people – are attached to college football and college basketball like anything else, unlike anything else. So, I, I mean, it's kind of hard for me to answer just because I haven't focused in on that very much, um, nor do I know what's really happening. Um, I think, I personally think that college players should get paid. I mean, they, it's, I mean, I know they're getting scholarships and people say that, which is great. That's huge. But, and you look at the money that they bring in, it's just crazy. And some of these kids, like, these kids need this money too. So, I mean, I, I hope that women in smaller sports can get it as well. They, they need to get it as well. Um, how they're going to equal that out, that's over my head. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I'm all for it. I, I hope they can figure something out. But I'm sorry, I can't. 
actually answered. That. No, that's that's good. No, thank you. And here's a question, and I had the same question, so I'm glad someone asked it. This is Grace. How do the Vikings evaluate character, and is there any analysis of the social media profiles? Because we're looking at that even for the college players right now, and and we get, we hear from coaches, hey, we want to assess character. Yeah, big time. Sorry, I'm just getting casual here. So character is one of the biggest things that we look at. I mean, we are not, we're, the Vikings are very strict. We don't bring in, and I don't know if people have noticed this or not, but we don't bring in guys that have major, like we try not to at least. We're very strict with our character. And that starts from our ownership all the way down. You know, it starts mm -hmm. with our ownership. That goes to the GM. That yeah. goes to, you know, it's. You know, it's they set the tone. Exactly. And we want, we want, you know, good, men in our society we want incredible you know we just want good human beings and especially you know you see all these guys that get in trouble unfortunately and we've had it too everyone has it people make mistakes but those those you know you get fined for that you get some you can get in a lot of trouble for this so and not only that but we just want good people on our team and and we do and our locker room is really really tight and they're awesome locker room and because you don't have any bad apples so people say um <clears throat> so for us character is really big so we you know when we first go into school we you first get the background from the coaches from you know trainers everything like that so that's a kind of our first layer peeling back that and see how they are as a kid um and then you'll get to talk to the kid you know at the all-star game or wherever so that's obviously number two you get all that um and then when it comes to the combine we have um you know they, they do all these psychological tests. They do these tons of things that tell kind of how they are as a person. Um, and we have our player development guy meet with specific players that we have issues with. And he can tell us, you know, I think he, he's going to struggle in the NFL or, you know, I can work with him and it'll be okay. That's the next step. Um, we have our director of security pull background on everybody and the NFL pulls backgrounds on everybody. So we'll find out things that people don't even know. It's pretty incredible. Um, and then the other side is social media, especially, um, you know, nowadays, well, now we try to get ahead of it because once these, you know, these kids, these agents are telling them right now, clean up social media, do all this. So as scouts, we, I do at least personally, I try to follow these guys early, you know, for next year's draft class, I'm already following yeah. them because they don't know yet to, they might not, I mean, most do, but they might not yet. And even on, if you can get them on Snapchat, that's where you find the good stuff. <laughs> So well, we have a whole, I mean, social media department as well in the Vikings mm -hmm. and they pull reports on every single player. So we, we get to interview, um, you know, all these guys at the combine and we have their social media profile in their background. So it's in our combine book right there. So say, and if, if, if they had something bad, like a bad tweet from, I don't know, eight years ago or whatever, that's in there. And we, you know, we've called people out and they've been shocked. Like, how did you even find that? But that's, we have people that dig and social media is Huge, huge, huge. Yeah, no, that's great. And I, I hope uh, all these kids going from high school to college are paying attention to that too, because the coaches are, they're looking at it. They're monitoring it. So. Yeah, high school, you're so young. It's, yeah. I know, I know. I hear you. I hear you. Got to be careful though. Um, I have a question, um, you know, and I think that some of the women would be interested in hearing this and men too, who didn't necessarily play or coach, you know, I feel like it's a little bit easier to go your path. You have more credibility with the coaches uh, if you played football or if you coached football. So how have you overcome that? Um, I, I, one thing I heard was your willingness to learn and pitch in and do what was needed has mm -hmm. overcome some of that. But how have you really learned what's important in a player, given that you didn't play or coach? Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of coaches that didn't even play. So, and plenty of scouts that didn't play. There's GMs that didn't play. So yep. a lot of people bring that up. And as women, we get asked that all the time. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. I never played football, but so what? Like there's people, there's men's coaches in, I don't know, volleyball or basketball, yeah. anything. Well, we didn't play too. It's, it goes both ways. So um, I think coaches, I mean, especially that have been with us, um, they're really, really understanding. They don't care. I mean, as long as you're to your well, job, right? Exactly. And I've sat down with coaches and watched film. I've sat with our scouts and watched, like, I just want to learn from as many people as I can. And the coaches are super, they're so helpful. You know, we sit in uh, during training camp, the meetings, you know, with position meetings. I have a position every camp. 
So, and coaches are always, you know, if you need more help on watching these guys, they're always willing to help. So nice. I think it's changed. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure back, you know, years ago, it wasn't like that. They, it was all football guys, you know, things like that, thankfully. Um, so I don't think that's as big of a deal just because there's we have plenty of men, you know, as scouts that haven't played too. So um, as long as you're willing to work and willing to learn, you can be just as good at your job. I love it. I love to hear that. All right, we've got another question in the Q&A. Um, this is, uh, I'm not sure who has said this. Do you use text analytics or sentiment analysis with Twitter to find certain red flags? Back to kind of that social media analysis. Do you, and your IT folks may do a little bit more of that, or you might even outsource it through your security guy. So I don't know if you uh, will know that right off the top of your head or not. No, I'm honestly not too sure. Um, that's all our social department. Um, they're really good at digging and I, I'd have to ask, I'm sorry. I don't know how they do it. Um, yeah. yeah. Like when I first started, like when we first started doing this, it was only probably five years ago, we were digging on social. I was even helping doing it. You know, I was scrolling through this guy's Twitter page and scrolling through their Facebook, Instagram, whatever. I'm like, it takes forever. So I know they don't do that now because- Yeah, they- yeah. There's a much more automated way to, thank goodness for technology, right? right. Yeah. Yeah, I apologize. I don't know the answer to that. What yeah. they, I'll have to ask because that, that'd be good to know. Yeah. So what do you recommend for someone who's really interested in a, a career in football? And, you know, what can they do to position themselves uh, to, to set themselves up for success like you did? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is getting experience. I mean, I interned for years in college and I mean, you're not going to get paid a lot of money. It's going to be a lot of hours. You don't get to always have fun with your friends. Um, But I was okay with that because I just love working in sports. So the biggest thing is to get that experience. If you're in college, huge. I mean, even if you're out of college, see if you can go back to your school or to anything or, you know, it's it's just really, really important to get that experience. Um, Second of all, just to try to build your connections. Um, You know, we all our, not all our interns, but a lot of our interns that we've hired, um, it's either because they were at a college and a scout got to know them or Mm -hmm. a lot of these guys and and women at schools meet scouts that come in. And that's where you get a lot of interns from. Um, So you just gotta, you know, be willing to go speak up and go introduce yourself, especially, you know, if you want to get in the NFL, these scouts go to every single college, you know, we go to every college. So you can, you know, ask your, um, you know, your coaching staff or whoever, what the, even the assistant at the front desk, you know, they'll know when we're coming in and we don't care. We want to, we want to meet and help people because we were in the same position. You know, I was in that same position in college and, you know, there's a lot of people that um, go to the all-star games and just, you know, just sit around and try to meet people and try to, you know, just go up to scouts if, if that's what you want to do. Um, and same with coaching. Um, I think it's, it's just huge just to get in front of people. You know, you can send emails and you can send your resume. Um, but I mean, just speaking up for myself, I remember people more when they came up to me or I met them at, you know, a combine event or something like that. And there's been a lot of people that have paid their own way to, you know, show up at these places just to get in front of us. So, I, and that here shows a lot of dedication. Um, so, and I know it's not always easy. It's hard to pay for all that. And, and I totally get that, but just even just trying to build relationships, you know, find some way you can find a connection. There's a, it's such a small world that you've got to have some connection um, somewhere. So just, you know, send an email, try to, especially right now is the best time, try to set up a Zoom call or a FaceTime call. I mean, just to get that face-to-face is so much, it just keeps you in, in the back of your head. <laughs> I agree. There's nothing like that. Right. And, and for me, you know, when I'm hiring interns, I like it when they ask smart questions about the business and they've done their homework. You know, I can tell the people who just walk up and think they should get a job and the people who know they got to work for it, especially in sports. It's harder. Um, Even for us nerdy sports analytics folks, uh, (laughs) there's, there's more interest than jobs. Right. So and it's, it's a hard, I mean, it's hard. It's hard for any of us to get into it, especially I didn't have any connections. I've, kind of got lucky by interviewing someone in a college. I mean, yeah. some people have family in it or whatnot, but a lot of us aren't and we just gotta, but again, when I, when I inter- inter- interviewed uh, the PR guy for my first, in- for my class and then for the internship, 
I also brought my work, you know, all the, my write-ups I've done for Gopher Sports and all these things, I brought it to show him things as yeah. well. So right there, if you can have things to show that you've done the work and you have examples of, you know, your experience, that's, that's huge to do. Yeah. Not, I get having just a resume, but being able to show some work is huge. Um, here's a question, a uh, couple more questions have come in. One is from Adair, and she says, how, if it has, has the environment or perception of women in the NFL changed during your time with the Vikings? Yeah, it's been a complete 180, thankfully. I mean, when yeah. I came in, it was, so that was, gosh, 2012, 2013. 2013 is when I went into the scouting department. And I will never forget, you know, interviewing, sitting down with our general manager, and he's never, besides his administrative assistant, he's never had a female working under him or he's never, you know, never seen it in the NFL because it, this didn't happen. Um, and some of the questions he asked me, I'm just like, I'm just here to work and just do an internship. And it was, he was totally overthinking it and nervous about it. And I've never hired a female intern and never done this. I'm like, I'm just here to help work. And I mean, it's just, it's just funny how much it changed. So when I first started, it was completely different. It was, there was never, you know, really a female scout, a fe you know, there weren't many females except for the administrative assistants. There were no scouting assistant females. Um, it was, it's crazy that that was only, you know, eight years ago or whatever it is. Um, yeah. Not that long ago, really. Yeah. yeah. So now it, it's so much better now. And that's, um, you know, Samantha Rappaport at the league office. She's done an incredible job, um, you know, every combine now for the past couple of years they've had a women's symposium and every team has to have representatives go and they bring in these women and you meet with them at the combine you face to face you know that the league requires us you know which is good we need to do that yeah. um, so you know we hired so i i got hired on how many what are we, how many years ago now um last year we hired on a female intern um so i mean i even that took long to hire another one i'm like it, it yeah. just we're getting there. I mean, it, yeah, it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't because you got to remember these are old school football guys we're working yeah. with. Yeah. I get it. You know, I totally get it. But um, now it's, especially this year, teams want women to work in their scouting departments and coaching. I mean, look how many women coaches we've had in the past couple of years. It's incredible. And people are, they're getting it, you know, especially with as the younger, not younger generation, but like Kevin Stefanski, who got the Browns, you know, I've known him forever at the Vikings and he's phenomenal. And he hired Callie right away um, at Cleveland. And that it, it's just like that. It's just showing that he wants a female opinion. Like it, it does matter. And we have benefits as being a female um, and what we can offer. So I think it's just going to keep getting better and better. And it's so awesome to see because when I started out, it was, I didn't even know, I had no idea there weren't females in there. I had no clue because we didn't hear about it but now you know we do no that's great and thank you for for helping blaze that trail no <laughs> <laughs> we've got another question here let me scan down on the q a uh the chat window uh this is from joe have there been any transferable skills that you've learned uh working in golf that you've applied to your work with the vikings working in golf uh -huh. yeah. yeah um someone did work on my Resume. <laughs> yeah, somebody did their homework. Good, good work, Chuck. <laughs> um, yeah, so working, you know, I, I grew up working at a golf course my whole life. Um, and that, I was the only woman working in there. You know, I didn't really think about it. But now that I look back, I'm like, oh, yeah, it was me and all the guys. Um, and I didn't even, I didn't even realize it. So I think that helped me, you know, without even noticing it now that I look back. Um, and then I interned with the PGA one summer. Um, just in my hometown, we had a, we had an event at Whistling Straits and that was more in hospitality, which was good because that kind of taught, I've never done anything on that side of the business, the sports business. Um, so it was really good to just see kind of the fan side and help. Cause I've always been, you know, I've wanted to be on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that really helped me just learn more of the business and professionalism and things like that. Um, but yeah, but working at the golf course growing up helped me a lot more than I knew it. Um, just, you know, and I, I, I think there too, I might've been the first female to work behind the desk really. And I mean, it, <laughs> I'm trying to think about now. so it really did help me. Mm -hmm. 
That's good. That's good. Thanks for the question. So um, what are some recommendations that you would have on how to stay at the top of your field? You know, you've, you've been doing this a while now. Obviously, you're good at what you do. But um, how do you stay at the top of your field? Because you're, you're at the, the highest level of sport. So I know you have to work at it as well. Um, yeah, I think, you know, just always being open to take on more tasks and more opportunities. And you know, I, I have to keep learning every day. I have to keep, you know, the other day, my boyfriend was playing Madden and I'm like, you know what, I want to learn how to play Madden. I think he just, <laughs> in there. he just got back with the dog. So you'll see. <laughs> Sorry. Kelly, okay. Kelly just got a puppy. <laughs> this craziness. This is what we live with now. He's chugging away at water. But anyway, um, yeah, I think, you know, I, I want to keep growing and I want to keep climbing the ladder just like everyone else. Um, so I'm never going to settle, you know, for, and I fought for my positions. I fought for my titles. I fought for a raise, you know, I fought to get more and I'm just going to have to keep doing that. And I will keep doing that. Um, but in order to fight for that, you have to be ready for it. So you have to prepare yourself. You know, that's why I've sat with scouts. I've sat with coaches to watch films so that I was, when I was my turn to get my own States to go scout, I was ready. And I knew, you know, and before that, the year before that, I had to go ask our GM if, I could go on the road with some, you know, a couple of the guys just to learn it. Like, that's the thing too, with, I think with being a female, you're not given everything, you know, male scouts, you know, have a lot of the guys have started as the intern and then they go to, you know, we call it the Blesto scout or national scout. And then you get an area. It's like the course to, for everyone, but I was so different. So I, and they didn't really see that path, that exact path for me, which is good. I'm glad they didn't because I like what I do. But then I've had to ask for more and ask to do this and ask to do this. So, which is totally fine. I'm glad, you know, it's pushed me to get out of my comfort zone and go talk with our GM and bring things up like that, um, that don't even cross his mind. And um, so, yeah, so I think, I don't know, now I'm circling back wherever this question started, but. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. And I'm glad you are asking for it. You know, um, I've had a couple of businesses and I've just noticed that the women that work for me are not as direct when they wanted a raise or a promotion. The men would just come to me and lay it out on why they should, but the women thought I should just recognize it without them ever saying anything. And that's kind of how we are, I think, as women sometimes. So I would encourage uh, the women that are listening in on this webinar today to really take that approach of being proactive. And, and it's okay if it's a no, that at least that, that person in charge knows that you, what you have in mind and what right. you're looking for. Like our bosses, you know, everyone, they have so much on their plate. They are yeah. not, us, you know, what we're doing, what we want, what, you know, they have no clue. So like when I brought it to Rick last year, I'm like, can, you know, can I get a title change? You know, this, he's like, oh, for sure. What do you want? I'm like, oh, that was easy. <laughs> That's almost too easy, right? <laughs> don't think about it because God, Rick, our jam is dealing with so many other things. You know, this is yeah. at least not the least of his worries, but you know, it's down there. So yeah. And it, it Trust me, I, it took me plenty of years to actually go speak up for myself and which it does, I mean, it does take time and that's, there's nothing wrong with that. But until you get confident and know what you deserve and know what, you know, you can handle, then you just kind of go for it. Yeah. Awesome. Let me check the Q and A and see if there's any other questions here. I think. I think we have gotten most of the questions answered. So, um, what else, is there anything else that you would want to share with this, this group in terms of your career, your path, or any recommendations for them kind of as uh, final, final thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think one that you're just on this listening to me, thank you. Um, I hope I can help if, um, you know, if you have other questions or you want to be in contact with me, um, you can ask Diane and she'll get you my email. Or that's totally fine with me. Is that good? Yeah. Yep, for sure. I can help out in any way. Um, you know, the thing is too, we're, we are all in that same position as some of you are, if you know, you're younger or in college or wherever you're at in your career. Um, everyone has that next goal and wants to get there. And we're still there in some of our positions, you know, and you might be too. It's just, we all want to keep going. So don't ever be afraid to reach out to someone or, you know, ask someone in person things or just don't be afraid to go for it. I mean, just, that's what I've learned. And I, I wish I would have been, when I first started, um, you know, in the scouting department, I wish I would have been more like, all right, can I start watching film now? Can I start doing this now? I mean, it took me eight years to get on the road, which I wish I would have done it earlier because 
but then again, I mean, it was different times then there weren't any females and things like that. So I get it, but, um, gosh, you just, just be confident, just really like, if there's something I could say to you, just, just go for it. And, and now I'm trying to be that way in my own career now going forward. So, and just, keep working hard. you know, work hard and get that experience is, is huge. That's great advice. And Hey, before we go, can we see the pup? Is he close by? Do you want to show us the puppy? <laughs> So this is Hank. He's two and a half months. We just got him a couple of years ago. Here. Come here, bud. Yeah. <laughs> the newest member of Kelly's family, Hank. <laughs> he's a Volvo. We love him. He's cute. Oh, he's cute. Oh, he's cool. precious. <laughs> like, I give anyone credit who has a puppy when they're working normal hours and in the office. It's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. As we were talking, this is a good time while you're working from home. So uh, we're all excited to have football return in the fall, and we hope we hope we'll be sitting in the stands. But uh, we really do appreciate your time today, Kelly, and what you've done uh, to help kind of blaze that trail uh, for women in football. So, so thank you. No problem. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really I appreciate it. Uh -huh. Bye. All right. Bye. -bye. Yeah.